Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We did it. We finally filled up that 1718 Panini Essentials Basketball. That's the second half of the case we popped open a week or so ago. This is random team break number two. Thanks to all of these people for giving this break another fair shake. We comboed a couple teams. We got the Nuggets and Grizz comboed, Clippers and Wiz comboed in six box half case break number two from jazbeeshobbyland.com. Let's roll the dice. Let's randomize each list two and a three five times. One, two, three, four, and fifth and final time. After five times, we've got Ryan Redmond, last spot mojo on top, and in the 28th spot as well. Five times for the teams. One, two, there you go, three, four, and fifth and final time. After five times, we've got the Rockets on top and the Pistons on the bottom. All right, so here's who you get matched up with. Good luck, everybody. Ryan with the Rockets. Scott, you got the Nuggets. Grizz. Nick Sanderson with the Bucks. Phillip with the Hornets. Ryan with the Suns. Caleb with the Jazz. Jeremy, 33, OKC. The X-Line with Clippers, Wiz. Uh, Alexander Miller with the T-Wolves. Ryan, you got the Raptors. Andrew K with the Cavs. Scott, you got the Knicks. Andrew K with the Bulls. Scott with the Warriors. TJ with the Kings. Ryan with the Nets and the Lakers. Andrew K with the Heat. The X-Line, Pacers. Marty, you got the Hawks. Andrew K with the Magic. Rich with the Spurs. David, you got the Mavs. Dwayne with the Trailblazers. Moody with the Celtics. Dwayne with the Pelicans. Sam, put a bird on it with 76ers. And Ryan Redman, you got the Pistons. New home of uh, Dwayne Casey, right? I think he just got... Is that his name? <laughs> the former... The guy who won Manager of the Year. TJ offering the Kings... Remember, TJ, this is 17-18. This is here are the boxes right here. Remember, I marked them RT2. Well, maybe TJ is trying to go for that try to trade, couldn't trade mojo. All right, we'll give it a few more seconds. No? No trades? No trade offers? No one's taking up TJ on the Kings. Trade window closed. <clears throat> All right, here we go. On a Tuesday... Essentials Basketball, number two. Thanks all of these folks for getting in. This is the official printout. And good luck. There you go. So for those of you who forgot, about two autographs per box on average. Carl Anthony Towns on the front. Raz Cal Kid is asking, is this a bad... Uh, is this a bad century to be an NBA fan? I mean, do you, do you think dynasties ruin it for the fans? I don't think, did people care when, I don't know. I mean, I honestly don't know. Did people care when the Celtics and the, and the Lakers were battling in the 80s? And it was just them? Sixers, Celtics in the 70s? Bulls in the 90s? I don't think people care about the dynasty ruining it for fans. So it's not, I don't think it's the Warriors that's the problem. I think it's the perceived lack of competitive basketball that's the problem. So it's not the dynasty that's the issue. I think people are okay with the dynasty, you know. But I think people are not okay with a lot of teams tanking or competitive teams not playing against the Warriors, you know. When you got, I mean, the Cavs were the best representative of the East, and they were not a very good team except for LeBron. The guy, the LeBron carried that team, kicking and screaming all the way to the finals. They didn't want to go. LeBron said, we're going. We're going to the finals, and that's final. He had, he had to go into dad mode. We're going to the finals, and that's final. 
is what he said. But dad lost his temper in game one, broke his hand. Bone contusion. So I don't think I don't, I don't think it's bad. The dynasty per se, I don't think is bad. I think the lack of teams building competitive teams, that's bad. I like those die cuts. Those are pretty cool. We'll save some of these too. I'm going to try to convince the... So these are parallels, but they're not numbered. I'm going to try to convince the shipping team to maybe ship all of these. I'm going to try to get them to do that, but if they don't, just sorry. I try. I don't think they're backed up. They might be able to do it. Just as a courtesy for the early breaks. Dennis Smith Jr. Nice way to start out the break. True potential signatures. What a great season for him. David, David, David Lee with that one. See, well worth the wait. David was saying, in fact, he was just saying in the chat, um, not bad for the card collector. And I agree. I mean, guys like Dennis Smith Jr. is a reason why for collecting, you know, for collecting, I don't think this is a bad year at all. Maybe for the NBA Finals, it's bad, you know, but those numbers are kind of hard to see. 22 out of 99, J.J. Redick. There's Donovan Mitchell for the Jazz. I don't think that's numbered. We'll set that aside, though. There's a cool design to this. I'll bet this is going to look a lot better in person when you get this stuff, folks. I think these are one of those sets where it'll look okay. There's Kobe. It'll look okay on camera. It'll look even better when you get it. 42 out of 40 uh, out of 99. Marcus Morris for the Celtics. But the hobby, hobby wise, I feel like this season's been fantastic. There's Kadeem Allen. 19 out of 25 true potential autographs. That's what your Dennis Smith Jr. is going to look like. Well, it is like Revolutions, David Lee, but but better, I think. I'm a, I mean, I wasn't the, the biggest fan of Revolution. Oh, where was I? Swish Kings. But I really do like... Uh, I really do like the design of this. All right, Derek Favors at the end right there, too. I actually do like those, too. The license to dominate, I, I think that's a good idea. If they expand that to actually having real autographs on there, I think that would be that'd be a great idea. But this is a debut release. We'll give it a little longer leash. All right, so there's what we're starting off with. What's great, I think, and I, and I know I keep saying this every basketball break that we do, because our ba basketball audience isn't as big as our football and baseball audience. Um, but this rookie class has been fantastic. There's so many teams. So like when I do a random team break, when we do a random team break like like this, um, what's great is that everyone can end up with a, a good chance of getting a pretty good team. Obviously, the Celtics have Jason Tatum. I'm just going down the list. The Bulls have Laurie Markkinen. Dallas Mavericks have Dennis Smith Jr. You know, you go down the list. I feel like even TJ Leaf sold decently at some point for the Pacers. Lakers got Kuzma, Josh Hart. Um, you go down to Miami Heat, Bam Adebayo. You go down to the Sixers, Markel Fultz. You go down to the Suns, Josh Jackson. Um, the You got John Collins and Zach Collins, Hawks, Blazers. You got De'Aaron Fox, Fox in the Box for the Sacramento Kings. You got Donovan Mitchell for the Utah Jazz. So... So that's a lot of opportunities to get a lot of decent teams. Yeah, Jared Allen, right? Jared Allen for the Nets. All right, there's Carmelo Anthony. There's my boy Brandon Ingram. And there's Kent Bazemore, 98 out of 99. There's Kyle Kuzma. Josh Hart as well has been a revelation. And there's, wow, call to excellence, Will Purdue. When's the last time we saw a Will Purdue autograph? That goes to the Bulls, Andrew K with the Bulls. 
I feel like Will Purdue, underrated. Underrated part of those Bulls teams. Poor LeBron James. Where does he go? Where does he end up? Remember when it, I, I feel like, remember when he broke his hand? I felt like, or it's a bone contusion, but that kind of shocked me, you know? And I, I feel like I've been around sports a long time, you know? And I feel like, you know, I feel like we've seen it all kind of thing. I was just like, man, he played, well, first of all, he played that well with a, with a bone contusion on his hand. I mean, maybe he was hamming it up a little bit. I could totally see LeBron doing that, but still, like, I don't know. Maybe I'm giving him too much credit. Maybe the LeBron haters are like, Joe, you know he's faking it. Maybe. That's what people are saying. We've got Josh Jackson, 48, 46 out of 99. Look at that. I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Ooh, I am for real. That's a nice one for the Phoenix Suns. Ryan Redmond. We did it, Ryan. And now you got a Josh Jackson. Who do the Suns get? Number one overall pick. That could change the franchise. Franchise changing pick for them. Got to have someone team up with Devin Booker. You know, and Josh Jackson, who started playing well towards the towards the end of the season. All right, next one. John Cards is saying, to wait as long as LeBron did to announce it, yes, would be called an excuse, but waiting as long as he did, or, but waiting as long as he did to announce it, he's using an excuse then, in my, in your opinion. So you're saying it is an excuse. I mean, it is. I mean, he shouldn't, if you're the star player, you should not be throwing punches at, at whiteboards. And I think people were saying, I think who was who was saying this? Someone was saying earlier on on LA Sports Radio. I think it was O'Shea Jackson Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, I everyone knows O'Shea Jackson Jr. Right? Look it up. Um, but he do, he does local radio every once in a while, and he was saying, listen, I don't. Know, he's like, I haven't been in a lot of locker rooms, but I've been in enough where I know that aren't those whiteboards usually posted to a brick wall, to a cinder block wall? They're not on a easel. Most of them are not in professional basketball. It's not like high school. I, I think most high schools probably have them in a wall. So you punch the wall basically instead of J.R. Smith's face after after game one. So David Lee thinks Sixers. What Raz Cal kid? You think Sixers as well for LeBron James? This is what we're going to talk about all summer. ESPN, everyone's going to be talking about that all summer long. Yeah, but I feel like that would, as Raz is saying, I think that would kill the career of Ben Simmons or, or stunt his growth significantly. There's Tyler Lydon out of 99. I think he's going here. Miami Heat. Although there are some people in, in, in Los Angeles who are convinced that he's coming to the Lakers. I just... I just find that far fa I mean, I wouldn't complain about it, you know, if he brings Paul George and maybe see I don't know, what other whatever crazy scenarios, but I just can't see it yet. 30 or maybe I was just not willing to believe it. 35 out of 35 glorifies signatures Adrian Dantley. I don't think he would come west. So Moody says he thinks if he wants to win the title, the one team which appeared able is Houston. You think he'd leave the? You think he'd leave the East though, Moods? That's what I'm thinking. I, I I wonder. I wonder if he'll stay in the East just to face the Warriors in the finals. I mean, would he really go to the West? These guys together? That'd be crazy.
You think he's ready for retirement, Rascal Kid? Dave Cohen's 85 out of 99 for the old school Celtic. That goes to that goes to Moody. There you go, Moody. I think if he goes to the Lakers, yeah, that would signal to me that he's looking ahead to retirement. <laughs> Moving on with his basketball life. But I think if he wants to, for whatever legacy purposes or whatever, I think he would I think he would stay in the East. I don't think he'd go for the Sixers. I don't know if the Sixers would really want him either. Um but I think the Miami Heat, I, I keep moving toward, I keep going for the Heat. Dwayne Wade is there. They got a good young team. He's got a coach that he trusts. And he's he. if Pat Riley can mend fences with Dwayne Wade, he can mend fences with with LeBron, if there's even any to mend, really. I think the bigger beef was between Dwayne Wade and Pat Riley. But, you know, Spolster knows how to coach that team. You know, so, like... And they've, I think they've got cap space to kind of move people there. You know, I, th I think they can make something happen down there. His family likes it there. Mike Tower is saying, does the Lonzo music track about Kuzma affect – what was the track? I, I hope it wouldn't affect people coming to the Lakers, but I don't have the mindset of a professional athlete. <laughs> I don't know. I think – you know what I think affects people coming to the Lakers, Mike Tower? Money. I think I I think if, if the Lakers are like, yeah, we're gonna give you a lot of money. I think most for potential free agents will be like, okay. <laughs> I don't know. John John is saying that you wouldn't want him on your team. You think he's toxic to a team? Well, they traded everybody away not because of him. It's because the other guys sucked. <laughs> That's why. I think that's why they got traded away. Because they were not very good. <laughs> it's not like they were like these stars that were contributing and then LeBron's like, I don't like them. Let's trade, away. Let's trade them away. There's Edmund Sumner. True potential for the Pacers. That'll be for the X line. I don't know. I don't buy the... It's hard for me to buy the LeBron talks it to a locker room narrative. I think that the Cavs probably should not give him as much leeway as they should. Like to maybe be sort of a... Maybe let him be a de facto GM or even a coach or something like that. It's Tyreek Evans to 99, which is why I think maybe that's why Miami is good. He doesn't have to act like a GM or an executive. Pat Riley, check. He doesn't act, have to act like a coach. Eric Spolstra, he trusts him, check. Hey, speaking of Lonzo Ball, 7 out of 10 for my boy Lonzo. My boy, until we trade him for Kawhi. <laughs> so he wrote, so Lonzo dissed a teammate on a new music track called Kylie Kuzma. You know they F with each other all the time though, right? That goes to the Lakers. That's for Ryan Redman. I think that might be a joke though, Mike Tower, because I think on social media, they're always dogging each other on social media. Him, Lonzo Ball, Kyle Kuzma, and Josh Hart are always goofing on each other. That's got. That's got. I'm pretty sure that's got to be a joke. Oh, hey, you're welcome, Ryan. I appreciate you getting in. And Moody's saying LeBron a leader. He's not going to sit back. But I, but I, I, I sense Moody that you're saying that in more of a positive way, right? Not, not that he's, he's toxic. I don't see, him, I don't see him as a, I don't see the toxic narrative as much as what John was suggesting. It'll be interesting. I mean, this, this will be the talk of the summer. Where is LeBron gonna go? Where is Paul George gonna go? Where is CP3 gonna go? What's Houston gonna do? I actually think it's gonna be actually a very entertaining off season. 
because I think it's not just LeBron, really. I mean, he's going to be one of the bigger stories, but there's a lot of dominoes in a lot of places that are teetering, that are ready to fall. Who knows where anyone's going to go? There could be a lot of trades being moved up. Ah, there you go. See, Moody, I, I think I'm, I think I'm on your page about that. I, and you know what? I'm encouraged about this rookie class, David. David Lee saying good rookie class too. I've heard of this guy, Bill Russell, 74 out of 99 from Moody. I feel like Moody every every time Moody chimes in with a comment, a hit pops out. Moods. Look at that. That's not bad. Nobody wants to do essentials. Lonzo Ball in there. Bill Russell in there. Yeah, people are saying that this upcoming rookie class, um, should be could be as good as this rookie class that we're breaking right now. <laughs> yeah, now Moody's like, all I need is Jason Tatum. Now, there's Devin Reed, ninety out of ninety nine for the Suns rookie autos. For Phoenix, that goes to Ryan Redmond. Which will be great. Two good basketball products two years in a row. There's Robin Lopez, which will be great. Julius Randle's an unrestricted free agent. The Lakers got to make a decision there. They've got cap space for two max guys. They've got a lot of guys who are on expiring deals. You know, what's Lonzo's development going to be? Is he working on diss tracks? More that he's working on his jump shot. <laughs> I think Lonzo will be fine, but I mean, there's a lot of decisions that that the Lakers are trying to figure out what to do. And I think this is a one per case or a couple per case. I think these are really short printed, but I like the direction they're going with this. That's Aaron Gordon. I think David Lee was saying that some of these actually sell pretty decently on a secondary market. I think in future years we could see the actual autograph right here. It's a nice touch though. That goes to um, the magic. That'll be for Andrew K. All right, last box coming up. Last two autographs. Good luck, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. It's too early in the week for me to start losing my voice um i like this question mike tower has a good question good basketball question here which 17 18 rookie from this class right here which 17 18 rookie benefits the most from having a good 18 19 rookie added to their team hmm. um dennis smith jr that'd be my answer well josh jackson I mean, the guys are guys who have lottery picks, I guess, right? So you got Josh Jackson with Donovan or with uh, Devin Booker, right? And a, an emerging Josh Jackson I think that's going to be a pretty big deal. They got the number one pick. That's got to help Josh Jackson the most. Um, but down the line, I think Rich saying Donovan Mitchell, I don't think they're draft. Well, yeah, I, I agree actually. Yeah. Donovan Mitchell, you got to help. You got to keep building around him with young talent, right? That can grow together. And I think all the big rookies, I mean, maybe except for the Celtics who seem to have it, they have it all together already. They just need to keep those guys healthy. So, but Dennis Smith Jr., I think the Mavericks have a high pick. There's call to excellence, Brian Scalabrini, 16 out of 49. It's another one for Moody. Not quite the Tatum he was looking for, but another old school Celtic there. Um, I, I think Dennis Smith Jr. was also because 
Here's Lori Markin. Um, I'll save one of those too because they've got a kind of a high pick. And they gotta they gotta start building around Dennis Smith Jr. They gotta start reconstructing that team around what looks to be a future star in Dennis Smith Jr. Yeah, De'Aaron Fox right there. Insert indispensable rookies insert. They gotta start building around him. He looked pretty good. Actually, Buddy Heald kind of looked good, too. So they got a couple of good players there. Carl Anthony Towns is pretty good. Destined for greatness. 68 out of 99. Do they trade Andrew Wiggins? Maybe put some more running mates next to uh, Carl Anthony Towns. That goes to the Timberwolves. Alexander Miller on the board. Could trade him. I don't know. It's, it's going to be a crazy... Uh, Crazy offseason. There's Denzel Valentine to 99. There's George Hill for the Cavs. Above, uh, rock the rim, not above the rim. Rock the rim. Russell Westbrook. There's Ben Simmons. We'll save one of those. We'll save one of these Donovan Mitchells. See, they got to start planning for life after Dirk. I think Dirk's going to try to play another year, right? There you have it, folks. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. That is it for Essentials Basketball. Half case break number two. Got more hoops in the store. We'll check it out at jazbeeshobbyland.com. Got to protect this guy right here. Give this man some help too. Come on. Oh, come on, OKC. Give that man some help. All right, thanks everybody. Joe for jazbeeshobbyland.com. We'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.